What's up, bitches? What up? So Corin just came back from the airport. Yeah, I got this hat on because I don't think we spoke since um since the Knicks beat LeBron. Oh, I heard about that, but we're still like fourteen in a thousand. So oh yeah, we're terrible. Yeah, but it's like, hard to care when that's the case. I like the fact that he's like LeBron has phoned it in and he started in tank and like there's repercussions for that. So like you lose to the Knicks if you if you like half acid yeah but now people are actually having the conversation the uncomfortable conversation of like is this the beginning of the downfall for lebron yeah he's just so he's so um what's the word i'm looking for uh calculated or meticulous i guess in what he does in every move that he makes that um he just i think he's at a point now where he needs more superstars around him to win whereas in the past he could win with like me you um well, our art teacher from third grade <laughs> well no Bert he was able, he was able to take them take teams to the finals like he was able to put a team on his back and take him to the finals but he couldn't win on his own he needed didn't he needed chris bosh and Dwayne yeah. wade exactly yeah yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. a good point he, he he made it to the finals and did which, all of that which jazz. by the way i'm not hating on that when he was on his own to take a team to the finals that's insane like that's yeah. only a handful of players could do that in world history yeah, you can't discredit it, but also I had this argument with uh, Angel, who was on uh, Corin's World, that I'm still upset about um, people not fucking going over there and subscribing. <laughs> no, I'm well, just, that's the way uh, to get we'll, them we'll on get your side. Later. Berate them. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll get into that later because uh, I got some beef with with uh, fans. But no, um, so he made a good point saying, and you can't take away someone getting to the NBA Finals because like there are still great players in the NBA at all times. But he made the argument that he was in the East and there weren't a lot of great teams or players in the East at that time. That's not a good argument. That's not but a like, good argument. To get to the look, finals in any in any season, I don't care how easy your conference was, to be the only person really doing it and to take your team to the finals. I mean, think about it. When Kobe had fucking nobody on his team, what did he get? Second round of the playoffs and he was done? Well, yeah, like his rookie season ish is he was young. No, 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 was, not rookie season. I'm talking post Shaq. Oh, 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 like um. There was a dead yeah. zone there for a hot minute with Kobe, where he was busting ass and he was dropping 81 points on people, but yeah. still he had so little help that he yeah. only got to what like second round of the playoffs. Yeah, those. I think one year he might have not even made the play. Like when he had Dwight Howard and they were just atrocious. Oh, that's and they much were later like on. I'm even. talking pre-Dwight Howard, post-Shaq. I'm talking like 06, 07. Oh, did they lose second? I don't I don't know exactly. But yeah, maybe they lost second round or something like that when it was just like him, hey, Andrew Bynum. Uh, Let's take a I know look. they won a chip with Andrew Bynum. What year did he it, drop 81? Because I remember specifically he had no help that year. That was 06, right? Maybe. 2006, Los Angeles Lakers. Let's Kobe's see. actually on one of the late shows tonight. Oh, that's what's up. I think uh, forty-five and thirty-seven was their total record, which isn't for, a bad record. But yeah. let's, how far did they get though? But oh, for Kobe's first round. First round. They lose to? Lost to the Suns. First round. Oh shit! Yeah, that's when the Suns were like, you know, nice. running gun. Yeah, Raja Bell, fucking running gun. That was Nash, Stoudemire was... when he had knees. Yeah, <laughs> Sean Marion. Yeah. So, but that's yeah. my point: is that think about it, Kobe in his fucking pr- 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 prime, son, dropping eighty-one on people. Yeah. Only got to the first round of the playoffs because he was the only person on his squad. Whereas LeBron but he was playing in the West with against Steve Nash, against like uh I don't know other guys off the top of my head, but Kobe was in the East with nobody, he wouldn't have gotten to the finals. I don't know. I don't know. I disagree. I, I think I disagree with that. Really? And I'm a big Kobe yeah. fan, but I don't think that he would have gotten to the finals. I so think- you're basically making the argument that Kobe wasn't as good as LeBron? Because that's what you're saying, more or less. Because LeBron did it, so you're saying I'm a, Kobe I'm, was I'm a, actually a bigger Kobe fan. Because, I know that's why I'm surprised to hear you say that you don't think he could have made the finals in the East. Because I, I think facts are facts, and LeBron repeatedly took teams with nobody on them to the finals. Yeah, and to do that means you're like the thing that LeBron is so great at is he does everything well, and he makes everybody around him better. Whereas Kobe did everything pretty much well, but. He didn't necessarily make everybody around him better because he was such an offensive force that he didn't even need anybody, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, but I mean, there's something to say for like even on a smaller level. Um, I was in a chili competition at my gym and there might have been like six people in the competition or something like that. And don't get me wrong. If anybody's tried this chili recipe that I have, 
it'll blow your shit out the water. Like this chili no, like literally, recipe, like you'll be shitting and it'll blow that. <laughs> it'll that blow too. out of your ass. <laughs> but on some real shit, this chili is like life changing. It, like we got this recipe from Molly got it somewhere, but we make it. And if you make it to a T it, and I don't even like chili, but it, it, it turned me into like a chili <laughs> fanatic. So we, we got first place in the competition and I was a little hype, like first place. They gave us this little trophy, but then I, I was like, there were six people in the competition. You know, like there's those type of competitions where, yeah, you'll get first, second, or third, but there'll only be like three people in the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so like LeBron about. is going up against like fucking like Keith Van Horn and like all these bums that, of course, by default, you're going to be in the finals because you're the greatest at that time. So like there's got to be some like asterisk next to it. Mm. I don't know about that. I, I because I and here's the reason why. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody else on their own take a team as far as he's taken teams. It's that it's not replicable. Nobody else has done it, so it's kind of superhuman. Well, I mean, in a way, do, like Dwight Howard brought the Orlando 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 Orlando, <laughs> Orlando Magic to the finals. No, who did like, he have on that squad? Like he had like Steve Francis. Yeah. Or did he have no? He had um Jameer Nelson, Hedu Turkolo, JJ Redick might have been on that team. Yeah, that's that's way better than what LeBron had. Yeah, LeBron had like the fucking Deontay laundry maker. West or some shit. Delonte West, Delonte Damon West, Zadrunas Salgaskis, Wally Zerbiak. He had a bunch of bombs. straight trash. Exactly. So <laughs> like dudes that legit would get blown out of like a fucking like street ball park. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that he. But anyway, do you think he's getting worse now? Because I think this, I mean, he's old now for in basketball years. I don't think he's getting worse. I think he has an agenda and he knows what he's doing. So he's either checked out mentally trying to get the coach fired, which is a fucked up like um, mentality to have because it's just bad. And then um, he either wants to like just rest himself for next season and try and get some free agents and start fresh. Like, He's he's not committed anymore for this season. I don't think he's bad. Do you, no, I'm not saying I'm not saying do you think he's not, bad? I'm saying do you think this is the beginning of the long downfall into irrelevancy? Because I don't even think so. I think he's still got prime like prime years left, like 3. Prime years left? Yeah, man. He's a freak. Like Son, he started playing in like 2000 and fucking 5, right? Or 2006 or something like that? Maybe even earlier. But like some of his Dude, dunks are it's just fucking still ridiculous. almost 2020. And that's a hard ass sport to play all these years. But if you look at his like stature, and I, I've said this before, like if you were to go play in a high school game right now, you would straight dominate just off of like your sheer like you're just bigger than a high school. Two thousand three, dude, was his first year. Yeah, so but, you're saying because of his physical stature, but Father Time is undefeated, as the old I, saying goes. But Father Time, in in perspective, is like what is he thirty six or something? You know, like. He's still like it one third of his life is not even completed yet. No, but in basketball he's thirty four, and in basketball years that's like the equivalent of somebody being seventy eight. No, no. Thirty four is not that old for I mean like it's older. But like my point is Dwayne Wade is thirty seven and he's about to be done. You know? Well, yeah. No, like, but he's still beasting though. Like I think he's shutting it down. How old is Dirk Nowinski? Because Dirk is like Dirk No Dirk- <laughs> Dirk looks like an old guy playing basketball right now. Like, oh, that's, hell yeah. Stiff ass back and shit. Yeah. He's Whereas, 40. That's the thing. That's like, Kobe so went LeBron to 39. Six years left. Yeah, but the thing is, is how productive are those years? Like, do you pawn off the failure of the Lakers this year just to all the fucking injuries and all the problems? I you think could, so. Because who else was injured? Rondo, right? Wasn't isn't wasn't Rondo got injured. Lonzo Ball got injured. Okay. Uh, Ku, uh, Brandon Ingram's out for the year. Kuzma got injured. Their whole squad got so injured. So the whole squad is injured. Now, the question is, let's say the whole squad is healthy all year long. What does that same squad do? Because... Right now they're well under 500, and in the West you need to be well over 500 to make the playoffs. Well, here's the thing: LeBron's never been injured before, so he got injured, and that's when they started down, like their downfall a little bit, like the downslide. So, like they've, ne- we've never seen a season of LeBron sitting out for an extended amount of time, and now he has, and we see that like they couldn't recover from the like the dip. So, they took. so, so if if everybody's healthy, including LeBron, the entire year, is this a team that's like well over? 500 
and, and I don't think they're the well over 500, but they're they're fighting for a playoff spot right now and not out of it. No, they're out of it. They're oh no, no, I'm saying no. If if he doesn't get injured, they're not they're not out of it where they are right now. But they're fighting for a playoff. Yeah, but are spot. they like a safe six seed? Mm, or, or no, not? they're like a seven eight. So, like, so then, how the fuck can we say that he's not on the down end of his career? Because because the Lakers last year were straight garbage without him. Like they weren't even like no one was. They weren't even yeah, relevant. They were the Knicks. But uh, you just said though that with a healthy LeBron, they're still vying for a seven or eight seed. Whereas LeBron back in the day. With a healthy LeBron, you're gonna be like a fucking one or two the, seed. Yeah, but in the East, without you know, so, Giannis okay. So if he was Sixers. healthy in the East, he would he would be they'd be vying for a one or two seed right now. No, they'd probably be like a four or five. Yeah, so he's starting to decline. Like nah, it's not I think just, the East just his got better. So, I think the East got better. Okay, but uh, so your argument is it's not him; it's everything around him. Exactly. Yeah, players got better. Like I hear had... you, and I believe in LeBron because he's proven himself over and over. But at the same time, it's like that. It's if it's not happening this year, within the next three years, there's going to be a noticeable decline in his stats. Yeah, I agree with that. Because that's just what happens when you hit a certain age. That's just what happens. You can't fight that shit. I just don't like that he's supposed to be a leader, and like the the like the like the fact that he seems like he's quitting you know is just not good for the people on his team it's not good for fans and he's got people that come out on TV and defend him and say like cuz what he does is when he comes out of the game he'll sit all the way at the end of the bench for like 2 minutes or something like that and i don't know if he's you know regaining his composure or just like catching his breath but like the team will huddle up on the on the left side and he'll just sit all the way on the right so the other night during the Knicks game Clyde Frazier was like this is just a horrible optic. You know, if you're the leader of the, you know, the team and the face of the NBA, you just can't be doing that. And like, I agreed with him a hundred percent. And then there was a guy on TV, Damon Jones, who used to play with him and coached him and was like, you know, Clyde doesn't know what he's talking about. He's done this forever. He sat on the end of the bench and, you know, done his own thing. But my point is like, you've got too much, too many spotlights on you. You're in too big of like a, a like a position to do that type of shit because you know, the you know the the criticism you're gonna get from that you know so like you can't you can't do that stuff and and you may disagree because like if you have a if you're a golfer and like you just do something you know because that's what you've always done like if you grew up and you know you didn't shake your you know caddy's hand because of some the other caddy's hand because of some super superstition or something and you've done that your whole life but then once you got to the majors and the masters you weren't shaking their hand, and now all the news outlets were like, Kyle doesn't shake hands, he's the worst guy, this and that. When in reality, maybe when you get off the course, you know, you shake the guy's hand and say, hey, man, it's just a superstitious thing. You know, like, I just think you can't do that type of stuff when you're in too big of a yeah, um, but spotlight like that. I hear you, but, I mean, the season, his season's over. Like, there's no way they're making the playoffs. So this rest of the season, and you got to remember, for him, this is not a spot he's ever in, so he's fucking pissed. He's like, I don't want to fuck, fuck this. You got. But this is when he should be leading the most. Like, this is when he should be, you know, rallying the guys or sitting next to a guy and being like, Oh, he, right, we, I guarantee you he'll do it next season, but he ain't doing it this season because the shit is over. But that's my point is like why I don't respect him because like when the going gets tough, that's when you got to be a fucking leader. But it's not that but, the going gets tough. It's the going gets over. It's just over. <laughs> like there's yeah, but a difference but, but there's still games like these guys are still young players in the nba who are looking up to him and asking for advice and stuff and he just wants to sit on the end of the bench and do nothing i mean i guess i hear you but at the same time i also see where he's come from where his season's over his season is never ever over at this point so he's just like fuck it you guys didn't work he probably feels like while he was out the team was not playing like they were supposed to play and they didn't fight hard enough and so he's like all right you want to you want to be like that fine i could be like that too no problem i'm your leader but if you're not going to fucking do what you got to do and you're not going to play your role then fine fuck it you tank the season season's tanked it is what it is you want me to give you a fucking pep talk as you motherfuckers can't win a win a game when i'm not even in there it's just like if you're doing an interview with someone and and you're you're at 110 percent, you're doing your whole shit (laughs) And you could tell they're just phoning it in. Are you going to like bring it down to their level and be like, fuck this dude, then he's not getting my whole shit? Or are you just going to stay where you're at? I don't know. That's a good you question. Know? I don't know. Because like if you get that vibe, like, 
this just this dude's just doing it. He's doing it for whatever, just going through the motions. And you'll just be like, fuck this guy. I'm not going to give him all of, you know, Kyle. Like, and then, like, that brings your level of play down. And then, like, you start, you know, that's the same shit that happened with Carmelo Anthony. And, like. Nah, but Carmelo's been fucking shitty and selfish his whole career. Because whereas- he's never had a coach pushing him. And that's why, like, Luke Walton does deserve some of this blame, too. Because you can't let your superstar player fall into that mode of, like, Nah, dude, we, we're out of it, but you can't check out right now because they need you more than ever. Whereas, like, if I'm in your corner doing a show, I'm like, nah, don't check out, dude. Stay at your level. It's on that but there's, But, I mean, there's two schools of thought. Like, one school of thought is like, yeah, stay positive, keep everybody's head in it, nose to the grindstone type thing. The yeah. other school of thought is like, fuck you all, and you're about to feel some shame, and you know <laughs> that feeling that you have right now? You're never going to want to fucking feel that again now, are you? So now you do the right fucking thing, and then next season we come out here and we bust ass, and you do the right thing. But remember this feeling that you're feeling right now, where it's hopeless, and we know it's hopeless, and we're admitting it's hopeless, because you're never going to want to have this feeling again. Yeah, that's some manipulative-ass R. Kelly shit right there. <laughs> R. Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> like, mind-fucking them, fucking so they have girls? to, like, be, um, be sla- like, like servants to you. Son. Oh, that's throwback. Yeah, it's about to go down. I never really got down with Warheads. It, you know, it was more of a challenge when we were in school when people would have these. It'd be like, yo, how many do you think you could put in your mouth? Pause. And everybody would be like, maybe three. And then people would do it and be like, I'd be making the faces like, ah. Yeah. I always used to think they were so, so sour. But then you take one and like pause, you, you suck it for a little bit. <laughs> and then it just it, it, it rubs away like it goes away <laughs> it's such yeah, that we can't say like it's quick it for a little bit anymore it goes it goes quick like the sourness is really powerful yeah. but then it goes away pretty quickly but it is really fucking powerful not did you nothing. ever try and do any of those stupid challenges like eat uh, a whole package of saltines or something nah, like that some of them were literally crafted so that you couldn't fucking do it that's what they say like, like some of them it wasn't them- possible dude yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, like some of them, open, they, they sound practical. Damn, you can't open that. No, that just ass. bite it. Oh, that's a good call. No, I'm gonna <laughs> fuck that up. Just no, you're biting it wrong. You're supposed to tear and bite. Hold the sides. Fuck you. What? Is- oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I made it worse now because it got my saliva on it. You're you're killing me that you can't hold both sides. No, and no, just no, no chill. Little- I'm I'm gonna makeshift my own fucking way out of this. Oh no, I would hold it both sides and you snip. You like? I'm gonna use you, a stapler. <laughs> oh. I got this. I'm gonna use a staple. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna look like such a dipshit. You're gonna look like such a dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> you think I already do? <laughs> I did it. I did it with a fucking staple, bro. I did it with these things. <laughs> Holla at your boy for a dollar. Those used to be the shit when you were filling up a stapler and you would get one that was super long. You know. What? <laughs> yeah, when, when you was... used to re- when you when you would have to refill a stapler. Oh, when you and got you these? open up the staples and like they come in like yes, yes. Oh, I don't think there's a better feeling of getting a like a successful drop of a long staple run. Mm-hmm. But then if it snaps, oh sour. Yeah, if that staple thing snaps, then it sucks. But having the long ones was like like a good feeling. This shit is so sour, dog. <laughs> really. Yeah, I used to like the green one, the watermelon, and the pink. I got green right here. Oh, yeah. No, that says like extreme on it. That looks like some different level. No, no, there's the only one they sell now. Oh. It's just these. I look for the regular shits. There's, oh, there's watermelon right here. Yeah, I remember the pink. And what yeah. was the other one you said? No, the green and pink. The yellow I don't really rock with, and blue I don't really... Oh, I fuck with the yellow. Yellow, oh, I was always scared of. No, it's actually not that bad. I know it's lemon, so it's, you know, there's reason to be shook Yellow's a little like bit, the but... staple color. Like, if there was a Halloween costume of Warheads, yellow would be the color costume they make. Yeah. But um, those challenges, there was the saltines, which they said you, you can't eat a whole package of saltines in under a certain amount of time. And cinnamon one you can't do. There's one, a cinnamon challenge, one that's not possible. Cinnamon? What, what do you mean? I think there was a cinnamon one. We got to put cinnamon in your mouth and try to swallow it. Just like a little bit of cinnamon? It's like I forget how much, but it's the oh, amount, amount is not possible. It dries out your mouth immediately. There was um I don't think you could drink a, a gallon of milk. No, was one of and them, that right? shit gets dangerous when people try to chug so much of something. 
Yeah. I feel like I could do that one, though. No way. Like the, the, oh, yeah, um, no, you could do that one, probably. The Fair Play. Um, fair Play makes a milk that's so good. I think it's Fair Play. They make a chocolate never milk and a, and a regular milk. I've never been a big uh, dairy guy with that, like with drinking milk or whatever, but, I mean, I like ice cream, but it's got to be like, I usually am not good. I'm like mildly lactose intolerant, so I got to yeah, have, yeah, yeah. you know, like skim milk and shit like that. Someone um, showed on Facebook today, you remember the Got Milk ads? Hell yeah. They were they put a Got Milk ad because I guess chocolate milk like retweeted some depressing ass shit and they were just like, damn, chocolate milk's like feeling sad right now. It, they like tweeted something like, um, if someone doesn't text you, like you could text it like the phone works both ways type of shit. And the, it was like. Damn, chocolate milk's getting deep right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when brands try to do that, man. They try to be relatable. You yeah. Got like, you got like fucking Burger King and Wendy's like tweeting at each other and stuff. And it's yeah, like, like, can stop. you just shut the fuck up? I like your burgers. Leave it at that. Yeah. Shout out to White Castle because they hooked me up with. And actually, they didn't even hook me up with that much shit. They said we want to send you coupons. And they were like, uh, DM us. So I DM them. And they sent me like two free burgers and a free drink that's so what's up end up nah i had to end up paying money why what do you mean because do- i can't have two burgers and a drink like i needed to order more stuff yeah but you got the that's deducted from your overall price yeah, dude but, like they could have your white castle you could bless me with like 100 burgers and not even feel a dent <laughs> like you're you could bugging make, <laughs> you would make like, my year if you gave me 100 burgers they'd make my year with two burgers what the fuck Two, you- no, because two frustrates me. Two is like, why even reach out to me? Like, give me a hundred, like, give me a thousand burgers. Thousand? <laughs> That's like a lifetime for free at White Castle. If you're when, if you're White Castle, I mean, they could, of course, they could afford it. That's not the question. The question is like, they're giving something, and they're doing it because your video, right? No, no, that was because I uh, tweeted in my car one time a while ago, just a picture of it with its seatbelt on. Oh, I, oh, I remember that. I remember you that. Retweeted I remember that. it, yeah, and it yeah, got yeah, mad yeah. likes. And they hit me up like, uh, like, like DM us or something like that. And I was like, "Yo, <laughs> you up?" <laughs> Just so you know, now you've got your first official meme coming your way. People are gonna say you sold out to Big White Castle. <laughs> I hope so, man. White or, Castle, shout out to White Castle or Big Burger or something like that. That video, um, by the way, is hilarious. Corin released a video on his YouTube channel, Corin's World. Plug yeah. for you, Cor. Where uh, um, he, it's just him eating White Castle. And it's fucking hilarious. Ten was a lot. Ten was a, a good amount. Nah, not even. See, this is the thing. Oh, by the way, let's tell everybody about what's coming up because this is fucking exciting. I'm like li- yeah, yeah. really looking forward to this. So me and Corin, I'm gonna are, be in uh, New York on Friday. Yeah. So me and Corin got a bunch of stuff planned, and a lot of stuff's gonna be you know recorded and uploaded on his channel and stuff. And um, you know, one of the things is we're gonna see if we could do what's called the tour. Oof. And we talked about that on this on the podcast before, but the idea of the tour, me and uh, my friend Bobby came up with this, mm-hmm. and the idea is you basically go to every fast food place and you get one item from each fad, fast food place, and then you have to eat all of it. So you know, let, you go to you go to McDonald's and maybe you get a, a cheeseburger. You go to Taco Bell, you get a gordita crunch. Yeah. You go to KFC and you get a snacker. And the list goes on and on. But you have to go to all the fast food places, and you have to get one from each place. I'm putting it... If, Was if it one I or two? I got to text Bob. I'm gonna, I'll text Bobby now and ask him. Yeah, find out. If I don't die from the tour on Friday, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, this is an official statement. <laughs> I'm going to start eating healthier after the tour. So that's bull. <laughs> I either die from the tour of a heart attack, or I live to eat healthy the day after the tour. Was the tour one or two items from each fast food place? So while he texts Bobby, our boy, I, I have a beef with all. So last week we got like 30,000 views on the video on Kyle and Corin. Uh-huh. None of those motherfuckers came over to Corin's world. Well, you have, so that, how many do you have now? 2,500, something like that? I'm almost at 3,000. I'm so proud of 3,000, dog. But it's a long, it, it's a long climb, dude. There That's how this 20, works. There should be 29,000 people. <laughs> long climb, dog. The channel. I it's need a, you to, to um, put Corin's world thing in the description so people could click that. Okay. The All bottom. right, I'll do that. I'll do that. But 29,000 people should be at Corin's world tomorrow. Okay. Jerking off. 
<laughs> <laughs> Beating off to Corin's uh, video of him eating White Castle. That's my beef with the 29,000s out there. You, because you're all bots to me right now. You're all fake bots. Yeah, dude, not for nothing. You almost have three thousand. You're gonna have three thousand very shortly, and then I want all. They're all bots. All right. We're gonna start before watching this video. We're gonna be like StubHub and all these other accounts. We're gonna make you type in some random fucking letters and numbers to watch the video to verify that there's real people watching this. Wait, why? Oh, you don't think you don't think they're real because uh. They're not because all subscribing 29, to Because 29,000 of them haven't come over to Corn's World. <laughs> Dog, that's not how it works. People are watching this, like, laying in bed, fucking farting, you know, like, chilling out, and then you're commanding them to do something. Here's going to be their reaction. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, <laughs> that's their immediate reaction. If you say to do anything, is going to be like, nah, fuck yeah, you. Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah. If I was a viewer and someone said that shit, I'll be like, nah, fuck you. Yeah, exactly. That's the fucking point. So I, that's I just, what I'm saying. Yeah. You got 2,900. 2, people. I need more than like 12 to come over from Kyle and Corin. But I'm saying you got 2,900 and your channel has existed for what? A week and a half? Two weeks? Yeah. Like that's fucking, yeah. you're I'm breaking records, man. This is record breaking shit over here. I'm you know great. how long I had to grind it out to get to 2,900, dog? I, I said to Molly the other day, I was just like, it's mind blowing that like, not even just you, but there's just so many random – like she'll click on a video because she watches all these videos of couples and stuff like that. They just have so many subscri- – like where where are all these people oh, in the yeah. world? Forget it. My channel is small compared to so many channels, man. Like, like people with fucking 5.7 million subscribers for no reason. Just, it's nuts. I know. So talking about little, nothing. Um, <laughs> We're making fun of them, but meanwhile, we talk about nothing on this show. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, shout out to people who listen to this because sometimes I'm like, I don't even know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but her little cousins they like i've said this before they watch these like they watch these dumb like high school kids just like they'll get in a car together and they're like hey you want to go to chipotle oh i love chipotle what do you get and like they'll be like don't forget to subscribe that, and they'll son, have, like, that's exactly what we're about million. to do with fucking the tour <laughs> no but they're yeah no but like ours is like no, but like they don't, they don't like they haven't grinded it out in life enough to like have that many subscribers. Like they haven't done enough shit to have that many subscribers. Like we've we've lived our life. Corn's being an elitist YouTuber now. No, because those kids are like, those kids are the ones whose parents are like buying their college tuition and shit like that. They have a easier leg up than us. We had to like work. Like I worked at an ice cream store. Like you worked at a farm pharmacy shit. Like. We had to do real stuff. We didn't get to just like leave high school. Like when we left high school, it was like, are we going to the poker club to make money to like actually like have a boatload of money? Because like we made some serious money. But like we had to work hard. We had to sit at a table with grimy ass Italian people who were like. <laughs> no no just, disrespect, not, by no, the way. No I'm half Italian, Italian people, so it's okay. <laughs> no disrespect to Italian people. The people that we sat with were just like grimy. Yeah. Their names and and some they were they were, yeah but like <laughs> we had to sit there with them their nails weren't cut they were like all like shriveled up golem looking nails <sighs> we had to sit with those dudes at nighttime to like uh, uh, like potentially earn a boatload of money and some nights we lost a lot of some nights a lot you of lose money. a lot of money yeah we weren't leaving high school and sitting in like a BMW X5 yeah you know Chevy like Cavalier rec- baby <laughs> yeah like recording. Us like mouthing the words to a Taylor Swift song and getting forty million views yeah. and making a boat. Who's fun, the like Jake? Jake Paul is that his name? There's a YouTuber that has blonde hair that just is such a prick, and uh, he's exactly who I'm like, thinking about uh, as you're talking about this. Yeah, Jake Paul, the Paul brothers. They look like they're made in a fucking factory. Logan Paul and Jake Paul. I mean, even their names. Jesus fucking Christ. He's like they the poster boys for fucking for elitism. And yeah. they're these giant YouTubers who are hit numbers that I'll never conceive of or ever reach in my entire life. And and click on a random video of theirs. Are you on their page? Oh yeah, I'm on. Uh, yeah, I'm on. Just click on something. I'm Logan sure it's gonna Paul. be them like being super super energetic. Dude, ready for this? Eighteen point eight million subscribers. Yeah, click on a video. Click on some shit. People won't be able to hear it, but no, but like just describe what they're doing. It's probably like riding a skateboard while like. Touching each other's like foot or something. Here's 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 one. It says I lost twenty five thousand dollars in twenty five minutes. What? I sort of want to watch that. <laughs> and they're not even. Uh, I mean, maybe they're, of, maybe they're sports betters, but they're not. Subscribe to their shit. That's an interesting. <laughs> <mess up. laughs> 
<laughs> you might have just convinced me. Um, wearing long acrylic nails for 24 hours. Nah, see, like, that actually sounds pretty hot, too. I see, curious. you're gonna fucking, I, I knew you'd like this motherfucker. <laughs> he annoys the shit out of me. 18 million subs for no reason, and he gets That's a crazy. zillion likes on every video, too. He's probably, like, 12 years old. Do you hear that? What? Do you, do you hear the video or no? No, no, no I didn't no. think so. I could hear it through my headphones, but people can't. You know what I want to start doing on my corns world? Beating off. That and every <laughs> video. Every video, I just want to put that scary um, Japanese meme in there. <laughs> oh, Midway. hell no. That shit is scary as fuck. What if just every video at some point I just put that meme in there? Nah, people stop watching your shit. That shit is scary, man. I don't want to see that. I know that shit is scary as fuck. Yeah, it's scary. That thing scares me. There was and a the video. Creator was like, I didn't create this to make it scary. I was like, dude, did you look at the fucking thing? That's crazy that he said that. But there's this one uh, video that they said it was like a commercial or something, and it was so fucking scary that they had to take it off the air. It was like a Japanese commercial. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, let me look on my phone because then if I, I could show everybody old school style. Shout out to the Japanese people. They make like the like the craziest comics and like uh, cartoons and all this shit. Wait, Bobby didn't respond. He, he answered, but he didn't answer the question. Oh, was, how do you do that? I don't think I made it clear. Was it one or two items, though, uh, per place? Let's see. <laughs> per place, I don't remember. Um... Uh, what was I going to say? The Japanese commercial. Okay, hold on. I got to try to pull this up. So the Japanese commercial, they like took it off the air because it was so fucking scary. It's like uh, somebody driving on this road at night. And then what? like the girl li- girl standing there, little girl standing there in like a dress or some shit. Okay. Um, what the hell type of commercial is this for? It's just, I don't know, but they pulled it because it was too scary. <laughs> Japanese horror commercial. Damn. Yeah, I remember watching this shit. Oh, I found it. <laughs> it's a tire commercial, but it's scary as fuck. What? I'm about to play it for everybody. If it's got that, like, face. Oh, Bobby texted you back. Oh, his name's on the screen. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. You're famous now. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> he, he wouldn't give a fuck. That joint sounds scary. Hold on, it's scary hell? as fuck, dude. All right. That was like a mainstream commercial? Oh, Bobby's sending a dick pic. <laughs> <laughs> Driving on a road at night? Yep. Wait for it. It better not be like, oh, what? <laughs> I told you. Nah, chill. They can't do that. It's chasing them, dog. They're going in reverse. You want to hear something crazy? Like super, super crazy? What's that? That happened to me. Shut the fuck up. In DR. Shut the fuck up. We were driving on a dark ass road. You can, my brother will vouch and he listens to this shit now. So he's going to get a kick out of this. We were driving on a dark road like that. And a zombie ass lady like that was in front of our car. It, it was out of some Walking Dead shit. That's the scariest thing I've ever heard in my life, man. It was so scary. Like, we were just driving, and she was just like, uh... Did she uh, look uh, out uh, of uh, it, too? Uh, she looked like she was high as fuck. Super out of it. She looked like she was a walker. That's so fucking creepy. It, like, that might have been our footage. And they just, like, <laughs> stole that shit for the tire commercial. <laughs> but that was good, right? Wasn't that scary as fuck? I can't believe Hell that happened yeah, in real life. yeah, they can't do that. They, like... So what happened? Did you stop and like back up or did you actually ask her like, you all right? <laughs> I don't remember what we did. We either drove around her or she just like walked off to the side. <laughs> you but, had a moment where you almost shit yourself? Um, Lemon one, bro. What is, oh, lemon. Oh. There was a lot of moments in DR where I almost shat myself. And Jed will tell some of those stories. On Corrin's World, which 29,000 people have not subscribed. <laughs> No, it really is. It really is a good channel. It's strangely, uh, it's strangely interesting where you find yourself watching corn eating burgers, and you're like, "Damn, I gotta watch the rest of this." <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got. I went to the hot dog spot today, so I did a like. I, I, I this will be like a short video just because I housed the double dog with like. Fries oh, you recorded and, it. Yeah. See, you're getting used to this, man. You're just like, I'm just gonna record yeah. everything. 
and see if people like it. <laughs> yeah, I know. At some point, they're going to be like, all right, dude, just have your heart attack already. <laughs> well, I said, that's the one thing, is it? That's the one thing that'll Especially stop Especially after channel. the tour, when we do the tour, everybody's going to look at us like, hey, listen, man, if you guys end up having a fucking heart attack at 57, we're not even going to feel bad. Yeah, I know. We're just going to be like, what'd you expect? I know. That's why it's either heart attack after the tour or like I start my like cleanse of eating eating better. Okay. My shirt, I'm, my shirt my starting to get a little thicker too. No, I I put on I mean more because of the winter than my diet, but I mm-hmm. I put on ten pounds because. Oh, in for the real? Win- yeah, in the winter I'm not nearly as active. I'm yeah, more, that's true. Like in the summer I'll play golf and I'll be outside. Yeah. And it's like that just helps you lose weight, and I mean I work out, but when you work out and you're just doing like an hour, you know, an hour four days a week is not is not really doing shit, you know. Yeah, I know. He said, um, pending the place, like sometimes we got fries and burger and McDonald's or fries. Oh, so and... you guys did it before? Yeah, me and Bobby were the OGs. We did it, uh, honestly, it was one of the best days of my life, bro. <laughs> but you we... don't remember, like, what it was from each spot or what spots? Let's see. I think I got... Because we have to have a blueprint of where we're going to go, you know? Oh, you got to... We'll... we'll, we'll... We'll map it out, and we'll do it for everybody when, on your channel. We'll, like, yeah, yeah. break it all down for them and whatnot. Um, like and we're cor- on, like, an FBI investigation. Corn and I are also going to take a little road trip and record a little something else for everybody that we think you'll like. Yeah. Um. So there's a bunch of stuff that we're going to do. But, yeah, we'll break it down. I think last time, I, it, I, I mean, I was, like, 19 or 21 or something when we did this. So... I know I had a I know I had a cheeseburger from McDonald's, but that's all I really remember. And gordita crunch from Taco Bell, but that's all Damn. I really remember. But there was that's KFC was in that shit. At. What's that? Surprised you went cheeseburger from McDonald's, knowing you were gonna get like some cheesy shit from Taco Bell. It was a dilemma. It was like, all right, what well, I gotta break this down because you wanna you want to want everything that you're about to eat, so you yeah. have to be strategic with what you go for at each place. Yeah, I want, like, do rules come into play? Like, do you have to get the specialty from each spot? Like, Burger no. King, do you got to get a Whopper? Like, McDonald's, you got to get nah. a chicken. It doesn't nah. just got to be one thing from there? Just got to be one thing from each spot, whatever you okay. want. One thing of, like, substance. Like, you can't get, you like, a, like a I don't know, an ice cream cone or something like that from McDonald's. Like, no, it's got to be No, you can do that. You can oh, do that. That's okay. within the rules of the tour. You just got to get okay. one thing from each spot. So, even if it's a McFlurry from, from McDonald's. Oh, okay. You know, like that's the, but I think if I remember correctly, me and him did not, there was no, there was no ice cream move. It was yeah, just no, like savage, kill. straight savage, like house and shit. And then was it obtain everything, sit down, like review it and then eat it all? Or like as no. you're at McDonald's, eat that? No, go no, to no. It, it, it's a, for the tour, it, there's a culminating experience of eating it all back to back. Okay. So you have to get everything first. There's okay. a hard rule on not eating before you get everything. Damn. I'm going to have to like, I'm going to have to starve myself a little bit so I'm good to like eat everything. Yeah, Because be I, I guess I'm full right now. That's you what know, I'm thinking. Yeah, you are probably full right now, which is why you're not feeling it. But it's yeah. actually not as hard as it sounds because, let's see, the ones that are in our area, we had to get, I think we got, um, it was McDonald's. Burger King, Taco Bell, and KFC, I think. It was just those four. Burger King's got to be in there, no? Yeah, that's what I said. Burger King. Oh, you said Burger King? Oh, wait. Did we go to Wendy's, too? We might have thrown Wendy's in there, too. Because there's only that Wendy's, like, in Elmsford or something like that. It's sort of diesel. Yeah. Yeah. But you end up getting... Even if you go... like, So if I go to Wendy's, I'm going to get six things anyway. So now it's just you're going to, like, six things. That's the point. Yeah, it's like it wasn't as hard as you'd expect. I do remember towards the end of the meal struggling a little bit. But I yeah. struggle like that no matter where I go because I'll fucking eat like a fat fuck <laughs> and just ch- shove the food down my throat, you yeah. know? But yeah, yeah that, no, I'm excited for it. That should um, be fun for, for everybody, including us, to eat yeah, all I'm gonna, I but, just, I got to do some health. Like, I'm going to play basketball tomorrow. But <laughs> you're, you're building around the tour. <laughs> yeah, but I feel, I, I feel my heart saying like, yo, dude, we're like – you're working us extra hard this month and you ain't paying us shit. <laughs> I, like, I like how, and you you guys will see this if you know Cora's channel. Half the shit is just him eating stuff. Yeah. And yeah. it's always, it's never healthy. 
It's never like, okay, guys, here I am. I have an arugula salad. <laughs> it's always like, so anyway. I went to this hood ass chicken spot. <laughs> no, that's why the tour is going to be my like uh, culmination. It's going to be my final. It's going to be my Super Bowl. Before and then after that, after that, it's healthy. It's turkey and cheese wraps. It's uh, if I can go back to my chicken and broccoli. It used to be so clutch because I worked at the ice cream store, and right next to it was a pizza shop, and the pizza dudes loved me, so they would just hook me up with grilled chicken and cheese on top and a side of like sautéed broccoli. And I could just have that every day. And I, I was getting cut. I was like uh, eating yeah, you good were, food. That's keto. You were doing keto. Oh, man. That was the best. Like if, you, if you're if you a chef, like you can't be fat. I'm sorry. Like, there should be no excuse. Like you should be disciplined to like make some grilled chicken and some banging broccoli. Corin's talking to people about discipline. Look at no, your no, diet. No, because I used to be disciplined. <laughs> I'm just saying if you're a chef and like you're cooking all day and you have access – like. If you're working at an Outback Steakhouse or something like Ruby Tuesdays or wherever the hell you work mm-hmm. at Applebee's, you you should you like you can have enough willpower to like make some grilled chicken each night, a steak each night. I don't cook, I don't do all that shit. So like for me, it's easy for me to just go to Wendy's and like all these spots and just have somebody give me some food and yeah. I pay hours for it. Mm-hmm. But if I'm cooking all day. I'm cooking one more meal for myself that's banging, that's healthy. Yeah. Like, cause I give chefs props. They're they're not lazy because they're on their feet. They're sweating. It's a hard they're job. Sweating. It's a really hard job. Hell yeah. And all the chefs I've met have been assholes. Chefs can come at <laughs> what me. What the but, fuck? <laughs> well, they have been nice guys. They, like, I'm sure there are nice chefs out there. Yeah, some chef was making you free chicken and uh, sautéed. Bro, well, he was like the pizza man. Like he owned the place, but like he had the like the minions in the back cooking it for and me. He would they just probably... bless you every day. Oh, every day, yeah. My man Jet, shout out Italian Village in Scarsdale. <laughs> Damn, that's what's up, man. But yeah, so if you're a chef, uh, like same thing as a as a like a gym trainer, you can't be overweight training people. But that's definitely true. Like you would think the opposite for a chef. If you're really cooking stuff that's so good, you probably be fat as fuck because you can't stop eating. That's yeah, if you're a pastry chef, yes, pastry you're chef. You, you're allowed to be a little like obese. <laughs> but if you're a regular chef, nah, <gasps> reel it in and just hook yourself some grilled chicken and broccoli like every night, and you could just damn. I I might go back to school and just be a chef. You're bugging. You're I am, but a chef. I I would do that. I wish I knew how to cook and do all that shit because like, if I wasn't lazy and I knew how to cook. And I had the access to all the food, like a, a full stocked kitchen. I'd 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 be making some banging shit and be back to like chiseled. You agree with that or no? Yeah, I mean, you and I have both at different times in our lives been super disciplined with your diet, but I fear that there's a little bit of an ebb and flow thing that happens where there there's no action without an e- equal and opposite reaction. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, Mm -hmm. like, you're so disciplined for, like, two-year time span that now when you take a step in the other direction, you go in the other direction now for a year or two. Yeah. And it's like you just fucking stayed super clean in your diet, worked out all the time, and now you're about to go through a phase where it's like, you know what? I didn't work out at all for, like, a year or two years, and I didn't fucking eat right at all (laughs) because people are people, and especially when you're surrounded constantly by all this, I mean, let's face it. Most of the shit that's super delicious is not good for you. Yeah. It's just not good for you. Especially or- people like, we were raised as typical American boys. Our parents were always fucking busy doing something. And there was always the time, like, oh, you know, on Friday nights you'll get pizza or something. But then, like, on a Saturday in the middle of the day when your family's fucking busy, they'll be like, all right, whatever, let's just go to McDonald's and we'll get them a fucking happy meal and give them a toy. Tuesday then, used to be the family fun night at McDonald's. And you get raised on that where you're like, that's the happy fucking food. That's like the, oh, well, shit, we're cheap. going to McDonald's. It's cheap. It's, it's cheap. delicious. And convenient. Yeah. So like microwavable meals, you pop them in the microwave for two minutes, boom, you got chicken, you got macaroni, cheese, mashed potatoes, and a piece of nasty chocolate cake. There you go. And that's <laughs> that's us our whole lives, man. That's like us fucking, when we were kids, and then when you grow up, you're not going to totally change your habits randomly uh, when you don't know 100%. anything about changing them, you know? Yeah. And to our credit, we actually did. For a hot minute, all I ate was like fucking egg whites with vegetables and fucking grilled chicken, like you were talking about chicken with some cheese on top. Mm-hmm. 
just doing like a strict keto and and yogurt I would have with the two, which I guess kind of violates the keto a little bit, but whatever, it wasn't that bad. And mm. I just fucking melted weight off me. But then at a certain point, you know, you can only eat so many fucking egg whites and so much yogurt before you're like, I'm fucking miserable. <laughs> yeah. I can only do a cheese omelet every day for fucking two years before being like, I want some pancakes. Exactly. And then once you have that first pancake, you're like, all right, well, now I eat pancakes. <laughs> and then yeah. next thing you know, it's off to the races. You're eating waffles too. French have toast. Have a little bit of French toast. Have some bacon. Have some fucking delicious ass oh. maple syrup. Oh. Yeah, like that's what happens, bro. Oh. That's just what it is. What are you going to do? You going to fight it? I mean, you could fight oh. it, but it takes... You know, credit to like Joe Rogan because Rogan's so disciplined with his diet, and he. Jed's like, been doing it forever too. Yeah, Jed had always been doing it. Corn's brother. There's an interview with Jed on Corn's channel. Everybody should check that out. Um, yeah, he's always been like that. I've yeah. never remembered him not like that. Which is crazy. Like, and I'll give him a lot of credit. I give like a lot of people out there a lot of credit that like, like you said, we were brought up on like you know microwavable meals or some fish sticks or like tuna fish in a can, like just easy, convenient shit because like. Our parents worked, so they came home dumb late, and it was just like, all right, maybe I'll just whip something together real quick. All right, uh, what are you going to have? Like, Lunchables for lunch. Cause, Lunchables like, just, were my shit. But just easy shit, you know? Yeah. So, like, for mm-hmm. someone to be now, whatever, 30, 35, and, like, they flip their whole mindset where it's like, all right, I got to eat healthy and, like, they grew make out of that Make my food, phase. make it yeah, on, make like, a food. fucking yeah. Sunday night for the whole week. But even as dumb as like we are, we still realized at a point when we were eating healthy or if you're still eating healthy, um, we were like, we can't we can't do that shit that we were doing forever, you know? Yeah. Like microwavable meals and all that stuff, you know? But that's the fucking default, son. That's the default setting, especially uh-huh. when we're working a lot. And then it's like, what are you going to do in that little fucking time? Like at a certain point, eating becomes a chore because yeah. like, listen, we're all alive we didn't fucking ask to be alive, but we're yeah. alive. Here we are, and you got to fucking live, and you got to fucking fill yourself with fuel. So you just dump whatever the fuck is around you in your body, and then you go, all right, good enough. And then you, and unfortunately, you got to do this shit like three times a day. I know. Well, we just do what we know. You know what I was just thinking about? Like, on my washer machine, there's like all these different settings. The only shits I use are <laughs> yeah. like normal and whites. Hundred percent. But like 100%. some of those shits say like bedding. They say like active. They say like seasonal. Yeah. So th- th- those other shits might clean it like a motherfucker. But you have no but I'm idea. I'm not gonna use that shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's like I could eat maybe cauliflower and like you know all this yeah. like like spinach. But I don't know. Like I've never done that shit, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna fuck with it. I'm not gonna touch those <laughs> buttons on the washing machine. The funniest thing in Kyle and Corn spinach. The fun- I'm shit my brains out. The funniest thing in Kyle and Corn history is when you were when I brought up that I was having what was it? Something with vegetables in it. I forget what it was. Oh, when I was like, oh, I'm having uh, you know vegetables on my pizza, and you were wow. like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, the, I put the vegetables are on the pizza. And you were like, nah, that's disgusting. And I was like, what do you mean, bro? It's just you got to get your vegetables somehow. I get my vegetables by throwing around some delicious ass pizza. Yeah. And you were like, I don't eat vegetables. (laughs) I'm going to take it a step further. (laughs) Why is there cinnamon raisin bagels? Like, why are you putting raisins in bagels? Oh, you're bugging on another level. Pause. Hold on. What are you saying, bro? I I never got, why is that? How did that combo, like, I get peanut butter and jelly. That that combo is fucking delicious. A cinnamon well, raisin did, bagel? How did cinnamon and raisin become a th- like? How did they marry each other? Where they? I don't meet? know, but that's fu- that shit is a match made in heaven, dude. That shit is like you know that shit is like the the couple from the Titanic. They could die in each other's <laughs> arms, bro. That's the best fucking. Cinnamon raisin to me reminds me of like Anna Nicole Smith and that old the dude fuck? that she was with. You are bugging. No, that's like some <laughs> brand muffin shit. They're brand muffins. That's what they are. He's a brand muffin. They're like they're like Whitney and Bobby Brown. Now he's like he's like cod liver or something nobody eats. Like that's what he is. <laughs> Cinnamon raisin bagel is like fucking delicious, man. No, he's their liver and onions, Anna Nicole Smith yeah. and uh the, the old fuck. hundred percent. hundred percent that's what they are. But for Would you bank ra- some old ass lady if she had like nine hundred million dollars in their no. bank account? No. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> it wasn't with Molly, probably. <laughs> 
she had nine hundred million dollars. You want to be a trophy a, husband? Oh my god! If she was gonna die in like a year or two, and you knew it. You gotta go down on that dusty box, bro. Yeah, but but then for, that's two years of your life that like is just a blip on the radar. That's like college. College was like four years. I barely remember that shit. If you're telling me I'm gonna get two hundred million dollars, yeah, I gotta be with a lady forever. For two you're years? that guy though. You're Stedman. That's who you are. Like you know, remember Stedman, Oprah's husband. Everybody you just, know what could get rid of that Stedman shit? What? A boat. What does that mean? My own boat. I could buy a boat, and I could give a fuck if someone calls me Stedman. Nah, you, that, that's how you want to be known, the dude who's the fucking trophy husband who just did that some grimy shit like that. Like, think about how soulless the trophy wives are. They are legit soulless. Like, I'm just going to marry this dude with a shitload of money. And then I'm going to fucking coast to an easy life where I'll be Xanaxed out by the time I'm 76 with yeah. wearing too much makeup with my fucking blonde hair and my leopard print shirt. <laughs> and I go to Starbucks and I go, hey, Joey, I'll take the regular. <laughs> These fucking it, trophy wives, soulless trophy wives. You want to be a trophy husband? <laughs> isn't it so wild that like we associate like those soulless people with like like we give them credibility. Like Anna Nicole Smith, like we'd we'd read quotes from her. Well, she's the only one. Other shit. people don't get that shit. I mean, I guess like the housewives of whoever. Like yeah, I mean, like the Kardashians. Them. I mean, like they built nah, a they brand were, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they built a brand at least. Like There's most be people, smaller, most people see through the fucking trophy wives, and they're like, "I see you. I see what you're doing. You're a fucking gold digger." Yeah. You know, like I see what you're doing. Like, who are you kidding? Really? You're you're attracted to this fucking seventy six year old piece of shit dude yeah i guess got so. a zillion dollars you know nobody nobody wants to suck that guy's dick bro nobody yeah does. true but they true. do because they want the money but you know it's if it's consensual between the two of them it is what it is but just you can't stop other people from judging the trophy wife or the trophy husband because yeah. people are going to see through you that's just what it is they know what you're doing yeah that's true oh you really fell in love with this guy fucking 76 year old oil tycoon weighs 412 really, yeah. pounds Swooped you off your feet with yeah. his walking into a, a fucking old age home with his rocker. Yeah, no, nobody, everybody knows that's not true. Um, so I got, I, I was a little triggered yesterday, man. People were, I like doing these nicknames for these presidential. I've seen candidates. this. I was gonna ask you. I fucking love it. I love doing nicknames for them because I'm, I'm having fun. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just funny to me. Yeah, but there's some people, man. They get, they're really pissed about it. Like, I'm amazed at how pissed some people are. And they're I pissed think, at what? Because you're making the nicknames for the people? Like, they're. I, I saw one comment was like, Kyle, you're not serious anymore. Or something. And you were just like, uh, I've never, you know, like, I've always joked around. Yeah, like, I sent a, I tweeted a video from 2015, a Kyle Out of Context video, where I'm fucking making fart noises and shit. Yeah. Like, that's always been the show. The show has always been, here, I'm going to give you... Some news and information that I found really interesting and I think is really important. I'm going to talk about it, and I am going to be serious half the time. But then the other half the time, I'm going to do commentary, and I'm going to fuck around. Like, that's yeah. always been the formula of secular talk. That's just always how I've done the show. But I find it weird that there's some people who just, for whatever reason, they have this, like, default assumption of me where they think I'm, like, super serious. Mm -hmm. And then they, like, project it onto me. And if I deviate from it, they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're doing this. Now, to be fair to them, some of them are genuinely like, hey, man, we think you're so good at the serious part of it that you might turn people away with the joking part of it, and we're just looking out for you here because we want you to do well because we think you're doing something that's important, so reel it in a little bit on the jokey-jokey stuff. Like, mm -hmm. that's what some people say, you mm -hmm. know? And and I hear you, but listen, there I, I there's a little bit of agree to disagree here because if anything, I always thought that no, oftentimes it's the jokiness that kind of brings people in to want to even watch in the first place. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like, that 100%. was like the John Stewart sort of philosophy. Not yeah. that I can compare myself to him because he's a comedian, nope. but like that's that would that's his whole thing was like I'm gonna be funny first, yeah. and that'll hook you into actually giving a shit about some serious stuff here. You yeah. know. But even to your defense, you've always been like you, you'll you're not like you'll throw a joke in or like be funny or something, you know, so it's not like you're deviating from who you are as a person, you know, like that's yeah. who you are. Yeah, I guess I just I've seen that criticism so much recently that I'm like, damn, am I am I wrong? Like it's giving me pause. Where I'm like, did I do something wrong here? You know, and, and some people somebody made a good point. They said 
no, the reason why everybody's bugging about the the nicknames is that um, they're afraid that because sometimes I use them in the titles, and people are like, if you're putting just the nickname of the person in the title, that might actually hurt the views of the video because people aren't gonna if they're looking for a video on fucking Kamala Harris or Amy Klobuchar, and you named her Amy Cloudboot Jar. If you put mm. Cloud Boot Jar in the title, who the fuck is going to click it? Only people who already know who it is. Yeah, yeah. You know? So it, they those people were saying, we're like, I'm just looking out for you. I don't think you should. Yeah, some people got a point. I mean, like, your shit used to be like, I mean, it still is like super official. But like, at some point, like, you got to joke around too. Like, a lot of these candidates that are running are bozos and they deserve a fucking nickname and don't deserve, you know, like, you give them probably their credibility. You know, if they say something good and that's why people like you, like if they said something or did something good, you would defend that and defend them. But the fact that they're hacks most of the time and they like say bullshit arguments or Beto is just like waving and flaring his arms and just being a joke. He deserves a joke nickname. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm o- I think I'm always going to be somewhere in that middle range between I'm being really serious about something and I'm just I'm joking around. I'm always going to be somewhere in that on that spectrum in the middle. And I just find it weird when some people, because I only get the criticism in one direction. There's no, nobody ever says, hey, man, you got to joke around more. Like, why are you so serious? I only get the criticism of like, come on, like you're being like, it's too much. Like, you got to be a little more serious. Mm-hmm. And I, again, I I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll, I could reel it in a little bit with the titles with the names, but... I don't know. I, I I was enjoying the fuck out of it, man. I thought it was glorious and hilarious. Are you really beefing with that guy from the Humanist Report? No, no. We were fucking oh. around. Oh, okay. Uh, no, that was hilarious. We were fucking yeah. around. Yeah, oh, so okay. we were having, for people who don't know what Corn's talking about, um, he, Humanist Report tweeted that, you know, like, oh, Beta O'Rourke, more like Beta O'Dork. Mm. He put that as the nickname. And he said this after I had come up with the glorious nickname, Bet on My Stork. Now, <laughs> see, you're laughing at that one. You didn't laugh at Beta, beta O Dork. You laughed at Bet on My Stork. Now, here's yeah. one. So, but anyway, he tweeted like, oh, be, uh, be, Beta O Dork is better. And, you know, I was like, you're fake news. That shit mm-hmm. is not better. Bet on My Stork is better. And I was per- joking around like in a Trump voice, like saying how he's the fake news media and he's fucking Ugh. doing, you know, fake nicknames. His name is Mike Figueredo, and I mm-hmm. t- I tweeted a nickname for him. I said, Mike Fakeredo. <laughs> 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 I said, Mike Fakeredo spreading fake news. And, and then there was the, the progressive voice did, uh, you know. I love I love the progressive voice. Did, did a poll. I just tweeted like, at him. Beta O'Dork. He's like, which one? Beta O'Dork or, or bet on my stork? And it was, like, fi- it was like 54% I think I had. And then when I tweeted, like, you guys help me go vote for a bet on my stork, it dropped. <laughs> oh, for real? Oh, <laughs> it went so from 54 lose, to 53. I'm going to lose subscribers by telling them to go to Corn's World. It, but anyway, <laughs> that, that shit was kind of hilarious. And um, so anyway, here's why bet on my stork is a better nickname. <laughs> and I implore everybody to, to clip this out and send it um, to Mike and send it to everybody who would disagree with me. Because there actually is legit reasoning why my nicknames are better. So mm-hmm. stop and think about all my nicknames for a second. Who do we got? Amy- I watched the Progressive Voices recap video. Yeah, that was good. Oh. Shout out to Progressive Voice. That was a great recap. He he graded. He he gave a an order of who he thinks you know. Did my he best make nicknames those little are. graphics? Yeah. No. 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 People had. I asked people to make them, and they made them and tweeted them at me, and I oh. saved them, and then he put them in his video. Oh, Shout out oh, to I everybody thought... who made a graphic because they're fucking genius. Yeah. So they we were. got we got Amy Cloudboot Jar genius. Fucking um, Howard Shits. Howard Shits. <laughs> we got uh, John the Breakfast Cereal Hickenlooper because oh, yeah. Hickenlooper sounds like a breakfast cereal. Um, <laughs> you uh, just like me. Kier- what? Kirsten Jello Brand because her name is Jello Brand. It sounds like Jello Brand. That one works. So now here's why Bet on My Stork is better than Beta O Dork. <laughs> mm-hmm. Your nicknames have to be value neutral, so they can't be. They can't, you can't go negative because then people will say it's mean spirited and it's mm-hmm. crass and like why it is childish. Why are you doing that? Why beta o dork? Really? You're going to call him a beta male and you're going to call him a dork. So basically you're calling him a loser bitch in the nickname. 
Mm-hmm. You, you can't do that be, you, because then it really does come across as childish. You mm-hmm. have to be value neutral. So think about a cloud boot jar. Is that saying anything negative? No, it's just saying it's cloud, like a cloud, just a cloud boot, boot and a jar. Boot? Oh, okay. Yeah, her name is Klobuchar, but it sounds like cloud boot jar. <laughs> So there's no there's no value judgment there. So people hear it and they just laugh like you're laughing right now. Yeah. Bet on my stork is just fucking ridiculous. It's saying bet on a fucking bird. What? And yeah. then we were doing pictures of him as a bird with the fucking head. It was hilarious. See, that's why you have to go value neutral. So when yeah. he says beta o dork, people who are not already in our bubble are going to be like, Damn. Yeah, you can't take a shot at someone. You can't take a pick, shot. Right? You got to, eh. and then you guys aren't like Trump. Like Trump does it as some negative shit. You're doing it as some just playful shit. Yeah, it's exactly. And, and uh progressive voice was like, yeah, but hold on. Howard shit seems like it's, it's negative. And I was like, nah, it doesn't. Howard shits. It sounds like it's saying like, like Howard shits, like everybody shits, Howard shits. Like he's can take yeah, a that shit. Works. Yeah. Like it it's not like who, saying um, he is shit. It's saying no. Howard shits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, could, I could get behind Howard Schitt's. I It reminds me of um, the Rugrats when they're they, the doctor was Lipschitz. Dr. Lipschitz. Yep, Lipschitz. I remember that. Dr. Lipschitz. Yeah, and um, and other ones like like, you know, we we have one for Dave Rubin, the political commentator. We call you should him do Cory Cory Booker T. Oh, that's not bad. We might have to go back to the drawing board for that one because we have um. People were saying for Cory Booker, they were like, oh, you got to go with like corporate hooker or something. And again, Uh, they didn't get the value neutral rule. They hadn't thought about it. You got to go value neutral. So for Dave Rubin is like a staple for Dave Rubin. We went rave Dubin because that that worked perfectly. But for Cory Booker, we're going to I my idea was use the same trick and go Bory Cooker. And actually, to be fair. Somebody tweeted that at me first. I wish I could give him credit. I don't remember who it was, but somebody, yeah, but I was somebody gonna say, tweeted that. If you're doing a reverse on one name, I feel like you got to like that's that's that guy has that. Well, category. no, Dave Rubin is a political commentator. He's not a candidate running for president. Oh, so we could. So why that, does he get that, a nickname? Because he's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the nickname can't be he's a dumb anything fuck. negative. But you, but you could call oh, someone. Oh, of course I could call him that. But I'm what am I going to fucking nickname him? Dave the Idiot Ruben? I can't do that. <laughs> it's got to like, be No, here are the Dubin. rules. The nickname can have nothing negative in it. It's got to be fun and playful. Okay, so I'll reverse his name. Oh, but what about the guy? He's a fucking dipshit. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I hear the rules. Beta. No, I'm allowed to talk shit about people, but I'm just saying that the name itself can't be like that. It's got to be, it's got to be value neutral in the name. Makes sense. No, it makes but the sense. St- the sentence after his name could be the most fucked up shit ever. Well, That's no, like the I mean, ultimate, listen, like, no I think, offense. I think but, a lot of, I think a lot of these people are assholes, but I'm not going to name them fucking asshole. There's not going to be, it's not going to be like, you know, um, I don't know, fill in the blank, Kirsten asshole Gillibrand or something. <laughs> That's not a good nickname. Oh, that's yeah. the old thing, man. It's like if you say no offense in front of your sentence, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> or they said there was a co- comedian once who said the same thing with bless your heart. So you can get oh, away yeah. with anything if you say bless your heart. Like, yeah. bless your heart. I think that you were fucking they that hoe or South, something. Like, bless your soul. Yeah. And now it's, that's the old word for like, you're a fucking dumbass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, um, oh. you got anything you want to talk about before we wrap it up? Yeah, I wrote something down. What happened? Um, this yeah, I was dead ass interested in this. Oh, and then there was a tiger thing too that I laughed at. I don't know if you saw it, but um, I'll, I'll ask you the tiger thing. He was walking down a hole, and some guy had his mug shot on his shirt. Oh, I saw that. My buddy and sent it to me. It tiger, looked like he noticed it too. Did you he see? He definitely his face? did because he, he was, was smiling. He didn't have a facial reaction as he was walking. He was smiling. And then, glance and he smirked at it he was smiling yeah that guy got a little him. sense of humor with it yeah no nah, he's 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 actually cooler than everybody thought like he was so isolated when he was in his prime that like everybody was like damn he's like untouchable he's so aloof but no yeah. he actually fucks around and shit and yeah, yeah. i don't know if you saw what happened with kevin na kevin na was the guy he was playing with on i think it was saturday no and i didn't see so kevin na um, they both hit a hit a, hit a shot in real close on the 17th hole, that short par three o- with the water all around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there was like a five foot putt. Kevin Na puts it, he makes it. But before the ball even gets into the hole, Kevin Na goes to like pick it up out of the hole. Like he bends over to go pick it up out of the hole. Uh-huh. And he has to like wait a second for it to drop in the hole before he takes it out. 
and then the audience started laughing. So you're like, that they've never seen that. Like nobody's ever hit a putt and then immediately gone and like to grab it as the ball's not even in the fucking hole yet. It was like some OD confidence shit. Yeah, it was some okay. OD confidence shit. And That's he literally like had to pause before he picked it up out of the hole. Mm-hmm. Literally, he was like, "Okay, I can't. I, I got to wait for it to go in." Mm-hmm. So Tiger, Tiger was laughing at that. He's like, "What are you doing? Like, why did you do that?" So yeah. Tiger gets up over his putt and he had hit a great shot too. He's got it to like four feet. And then Tiger, making fun of Kevin Na, puts it, and then immediately, like, quickly goes to oh, grab really? it and picks it up, and then the whole crowd starts laughing, and Tiger's cracking up. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were definitely laughing a little too hard. Like, it wasn't that funny, but it was yeah, still yeah. it was still f- funny to see how much they were enjoying it, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think, like, um, golfers sometimes are just so scripted in what they do. So, like, when they do, when they are a little playful or do something funny, the like, the crowd, the crowd, the crowd, like, ra- reacts off of that totally. shit. You know, like, it's a very prudish, conservative environment. And yeah. so when anybody is, like, a little bit outside of the norm, it was like, yeah. oh, 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 goodness That's why, like, there's that funny clip. I don't, you definitely remember it. Um, Mickelson and Woods are teeing off. Oh, that's my like, favorite clip of all time, man. Rolling through Woods is, like, accolades. And Mickelson is, like, after like the eighth one, he's like, "All right, okay, we get it, we get." It. You know, like literally my favorite clip of all time. Yeah, that's yeah. such a great clip. I, I think it was at. I remember watching that live, dude. That's how how old I am, bro. Oh, for real? <laughs> I was watching that live. Tiger was teeing up. Um, it was the first hole of like the tour championship on some. I forget. It was probably the weekend. But Tiger and Phil were rarely paired together in their careers. Yeah, but when they were, it was always a big deal because Tiger was Tiger was number one by a mile. Nobody was even close to him. But Phil was a solid number two. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they were like, and they've never done it that long before either. They literally were going through like Tiger's whole resume. Yeah, they're they, like they would've, the winner they of the going. 1997 Masters, the 2001 U.S. Open, <laughs> the 2001 Masters, winner of the 1998 Las Vegas Invitational. Winner of the, and it just kept going and going and going and going. And Phil was like, all right. If someone did that for like the amount of fast food I ate before I came on every podcast, <laughs> eater like, of Gorgeous. one burger from White Castle, <laughs> eater of a second burger from White Castle, <laughs> eater of a third burger from White Castle. Y'all, this is just in one day, eater of a fourth burger. <laughs> Wendy's chicken sandwich, <laughs> four piece nuggets, <laughs> McFlurry. Oh, and then I had one more other shit too that got me tight. So I'm mad at like CNN and all these news outlets for like them reporting on that uh, Beto like having raised more money than Bernie type of shit. Oh, we could talk about that for sure. Well, because like, so here's my thing. Obviously, he didn't have more like donations like people wise because he would have said that shit which someone tweeted that so i stole my thought from there um but like why are we focusing on something which we're trying to not focus on anymore like money and politics like why is money and politics still this glamorous thing that like gets every fucking headline and not the actual politics yeah that's a great point no one's no one's talking about the fact that i see on twitter all the time like Beto has no substance to like literally launched his campaign and didn't have a policy platform on his website. Literally. It's like, it's so like they're focusing on like, he raised $6.1 million and Bernie only raised five. Like who stop worrying about the money? Like who has a better policy? Who could defeat Trump? Like talk about that shit. But every headline is like the money, money, money shit. Yeah. And that's what gets me so mad is that like, we're trying to get money out of politics, and that's something that you've fucking spearheaded, you know? But it's like we're just reverting back to fucking money in politics. Like now it's not the big corporations. It's like who raised the most little money, you know? Like Yeah. I mean they're trying – they view that as a sign of legitimacy. Like, oh, if you could raise a lot of money, that means that you're viable. That means that you're legitimate. But you're right that it's just not the best indicator because yeah. Hillary Clinton way outraised Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton mm-hmm. fucking lost. Yep. So, yeah. And Beto could have one person write a $5 million check, you know? Yeah. But it's also, that's the thing, is it's also super sketchy how Beto did not release the number of donors because they're hiding that on purpose because they know it's not as much as Bernie. Yeah. It's a, and to be (laughs) fair to him, you can't, there's, you, they can't raise more than, it can't be more than $27 or $2,800 a pop. 
So mm-hmm. it's not like he's taking like a five million dollar check, but oh really? No, yeah, it's not that. But it it is the average donation. I'm sure is way higher than Bernie's, and I'm sure he had way fewer donors than Bernie. Wait, why can't he take like one check for like five million? There are campaign finance laws that limit oh, really? the individual contributions directly to a campaign. Oh god. So it. the way our our system works is actually really convoluted and annoying and fucked up, and like people don't know how crazy it is. But yeah, um, like if you're donating to a super PAC which is a thing, an entity that can basically spend unlimited amounts of money on the election, then the lo- the rules are much looser. Oh, like, so that's how like the Coke, all the Republicans and Koch brothers yeah, donate all that money? Yeah, you could basically give it to a super PAC and it's basically unlimited and very few rules. And, and yeah. as long as, see, under law, as long as the super PAC doesn't coordinate with the candidate, then it's legal. But of uh-huh. course, there's always back channel communication and shit like that. But so that's the super PAC rules for the individual campaign. It's different. There's a twenty seven hundred or twenty eight hundred dollar cap on it, and so an individual can't give more than that. But yeah, what you'd find is Bernie had like two hundred twenty four thousand donors or something like that. Yeah, that I don't I'm either. sure is going to be less than that. And I'm sure the average donation is going to be much higher than Bernie's. But yeah, I mean, listen, man, there is going to be one of the centrist Democrats is going to make a charge. We just don't know who it's going to be yet. I mean, I think yeah. it's, it's probably going to be Kamala. I think Beto is going to flame out because Beto's just not. I mean, he's a joke. He's fucking yeah. flaily armed, uncontrolled body platitude machine. And, Standing on counters. And a lot of his popularity just stemmed from the fact that he was up against the most, gr- you know, gruesome human being on the planet. Fucking Ted yeah. Cruz. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody looks great ne- standing next to Ted Cruz. A pile of shit. Yeah. He's just a horrible person. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, listen, I would vote for him for for senator in Texas in a heartbeat, but am I going to vote for him to win the Democratic primary? Hell no. Yeah, that just got me mad, the whole fucking that shit. Yeah, it got me mad, too, especially because they were, you know, corporate media was like fawning over him. And like that was such a disconnect from what everybody else was saying, because everybody else is like, what are you doing, bro? Like you're standing on fucking countertops and you're flailing your arms and you're doing Ugh. platitude fucking spewing like his first video i remember when i saw his first video since he launched he was in like a fucking coffee shop or something yeah yeah and his hands are fucking flying all over the place and he's not making any point he's just making noises it's like what well, stop why are you doing this man there's like well, a thousand candidates running now too jesus christ yeah that's a thousand nicknames yeah I'm, some of them don't even get the point you hit the level of deserving nickname like we said it, remember last week you brought up John Delaney or something like that? And I was just like, nutsack boy. We're calling him nutsack boy. His head looks like a shaved nutsack because he's bald on the top area. I love how your rules just change. Oh, like, yeah, that's true. He doesn't, he doesn't, he actually doesn't negative. get it. He doesn't get a. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get a nickname because then I'll contradict my rule. My rule is you can't, it can't be, uh, it can't be value negative. It's got to be yeah. value neutral. Yeah. There's no way I mean, of spinning Nutsack Boy to not be... I was just going to say, can yeah. you turn that into a positive? Nah, you can't turn that one into a positive. <laughs> if your name's Nutsack Boy, it's just, there's no getting around that, man. What are you going to do? Are you going to tell him, hey man, listen, your head it looks like a fucking shaved Nutsack, dude. You got to no, get some hair or bad, something. Man. Nutsack <laughs> works. Fits What's you. wrong with a Nutsack? You know, the Nutsacks bring life, bro. That's where the sperm, you know, is or something. <laughs> That's what, like, my brother used to say when he would fuck up someone's hair, like, when he first started working at the barbershop, he'd just be like, oh, no, nah, it's fresh, like, this shit looks fine. Something and they'd look at it and just be like, my shit is fucked up, dude. Yeah. They did that to me right before prom. Oh, no, they zeke your shit? Yeah. You don't remember? I had my fucking hair down for it. I never wore my hair down. I always taped it up. And then I think I do remember that. It couldn't have been that bad. It was bad, bro. Oh, really? And the thing that pissed me off the most is they sent me. It was the place was busy because the prom was coming up. Yeah, yeah. And they just shuffled me off into a corner. They're like, "Yeah, go to that guy. Go to that guy." It was a guy oh. I'd never been to before. They were like, "Trust me, he's good. He's good." And somebody was like, "He's new." And I was like, "What?" He was like, "No, no, no. You're good. You're good." And so he cut my hair. And then at the they end, like, of it, changed he it up. Fucked- they were like, "Nah, he's like glue." <laughs> Dude, he fucked my shit up so bad, and then at the end of it, he was like, I told you I wasn't new. I was like... Oh, oh, he hit you with some Denzel shit? He hit me with some, like, he killed it. And I was like, yo, what are you talking about? My hairline is like three feet further back than when you started, bro. I'm gonna have to wear my shit down. Damn, at least he had the courage to try and hit you with some G shit, and not like... No, I think he may have been delusional enough, like, on some Trump shit where he thought he nailed it. Oh, no. It's possible. 
Oh, I wonder what that guy's doing right now. Hope he's not cutting hair, because I feel bad for everybody who's got to cut from that. Dude. I learned my lesson so many times with the fucking fly barber being like, yo, 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 go to him right here. He's nice. And I'll just be like, I hit him with that face. Like, after the first couple times I did it. Yeah, and then after that, you're like, I'm done with this. Yeah, I'm not but then you it. turn yeah, you turn into a vet, and then, like, you'll see someone in the shop, and the barber will try and be like, yo, yo, yo go to him right here. He's nice. He's Yo, yo he'll bust your shit. And you're just like, mm-hmm. Nah. I'm wait- I'll wait all yeah. day for you, motherfucker. I used to get the best cuts when I got the skin tight, man. Oh, I know. My boy Jay. Shout out to Jay, who's definitely not watching this right now. There's Jay the Barber that you could go to. He'll come to your crib. No, I think it's a different Jay I'm talking about. No, but I'm saying Jay the Barber is the one that is nice in uh, that my brother goes to. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, it's a different one I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a little bit slightly heavy. He was an Italian dude or black dude? Slightly heavy Spanish Spanish dude. Oh, yeah, they're nice too. Slightly heavy Spanish dude. Um, I don't remember. Oh. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. But he was he was nice with it. Anyway. All right, guys. We love you. Definitely check out Corin's World. Um, yeah. Especially because we're about to have some awesome videos that hit there, Corin and I. Um, 29,000 people. 29,000. 29, you heard it here, guys. That's how many subs he wants. And we're so, going to start putting those uh, those like Scantron shits at the beginning of our videos yeah, to make sure that Scantron. you're not fucking bots. You're going to have to type in the Scantron. letter Z. You, you have to take a standardized test before you watch it. <laughs> you have to watch the standardized test and you're going to have to fucking – sometimes those shits like you can't, even, you can't even read the letters or numbers that they give you. And like I'll stare at that and I'm like, why don't they just uh, – No, I hate like, that. They always a regular person, you should just be able to type any number. That's like, the only thing that – I guess bots could figure out everything except that things that require human perception and human judgment. Yeah. But if they just put like the letter, like why can't they put the letter just how it, like, why does it have to be all like slanted and small? Cause and that's the sideways? only way. That's the only way that a bot won't recognize it. Oh, so they could put like F G H Z three, just looking regular and a bot could probably figure that probably, out. Probably. Yeah. That's why they got to do it so that it requires human judgment. Like there'll be yeah. some that say, Oh, click the things that have a car. And then there'll yeah. be a car way off in the distance, and you got to see it. Like a bot can't perceive that. But whereas I, you're but a human. Like, don't make it. If I'm trying to buy tickets to a Yankee game, I don't want to like, like have to think if the back of a car in one photo counts as the car being in the photo. Yeah, sometimes they. Sometimes it's not clear, and you have to guess. And it's like <laughs> yeah. this is crazy. I'm a human, and I don't even can't even do this. It's like what photo has a plant but, in it, and like the flower pot will be in the bottom one. And you're like. Does that shit count as the plant? You know what's crazy, though, is that, like, these fucking machines are literally better than us at almost everything now. Like, they were just, I was just reading an article the other day. They finally got to a point where, so, computers have been able to beat human beings at what are called perfect information games for a long time now. Like chess or some shit? So, chess is a perfect example of it. There's a game game called Go, which is, I guess, kind of like chess. Okay. But all the information is available to you at at any given moment. You yeah, know, yeah. they've always been able to beat us because they could just they, they're, they're logical deduction machines, you know, yeah, that makes sense. But what just happened recently within the past, like two or three years is they've been able to make AI that can beat humans at poker. They can be Iverson. They can beat the best pros in the world at poker, dude. I believe that. Yeah. But it, the reason why it was so hard for them to figure it out to this point is because poker is what's called a. It's an imperfect information game. So you don't know what your opponent has. Oh, uh, uh, So there's a yeah. lot of shit that goes in, like a lot of guesswork, a lot of like fucking tells or whatever. Like, yeah, reads. You got to, you can feel reads, But not just that, but all, it's just there's so much that goes into it. Like, you, yeah. how the fuck do you know whether or not you have the best hand? Like, you know, an experienced player, a poker pro has gotten good at, like, every aspect of the game, and they can basically exploit their shit out of weaker players. And well, even bluffs and stuff like everything. that. Everything, yeah. Yeah. And now they've like, created can I... AI that can beat the best fucking poker players in the That's world. That's crazy to think, because, like... That's what I'm saying. The poker How does it take pros... into account bluffing? No, it's amazing, because I, I watched the... I, I read an article on it, and then I watched a video on it, and these poker guys, these are, like... These are, like, the guys who make a zillion dollars online every year yeah, when yeah. they play. And mm-hmm. these guys were like, okay, so... They were all strategizing. There were like four of the top poker pros in the world strategizing with each other, talking about the AI. And they mm-hmm. were like, okay, I think I noticed that if you three-bet it a lot pre-flop, so like you re-re-raise, 
then they fold, they tend to fold a lot and they would hmm. find these little micro strategies where they would beat it for a short amount of time, but the yeah. AI would adjust. It would adjust and then it would be able to beat them. In the long run, none of the pros were able to beat the AI uh, at poker. And I was fucking floored by that. I was like, really? Yeah, that's wild. How the fuck? Because these are the best pros in the world, dude. Yeah, it's nuts. So, I don't know. Like, I mean, like, it's a fucking computer. They've, they've like, got algorithms and shit running. Yeah, so basically our brains are like a fucking shitty ass battery. And <laughs> now there are these super batteries that have come along and they're going to replace us. Yep. So anyway, we're all fucked. Everybody have a good night. <laughs> Pretty, yeah, go watch that tire commercial and ruin your night even more. That was scary, wasn't it? That, was, that, that was shit was scary. dumb scary. Yeah. Anyway, we love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. We're out. Peace.